Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is This Week in Sex. So, this week in sex, French lawmakers are discussing implementing a legal age of consent. And that's because France actually doesn't currently have a legal age of consent. And I'm talking, of course, about sexual consent. So, it is actually technically illegal to have sex with a minor under the age of 15 over in France. But because there aren't strict laws around what even constitutes rape when it is a younger person, they essentially really have to provide evidence of violence or strong evidence that there was elements of coercion or the element of surprise was involved. And so this really makes it a legal minefield for younger victims of sexual assault and really creates a loophole for sexual assault perpetrators. Here in Australia, the legal age of consent is 16 and in most parts of the United States, the age is 18. And this is to protect younger people from engaging in sex before they really are emotionally and intellectually ready to even truly be able to give consent and make that informed decision. And this is why it's so important to have a legal age of sexual consent. But I am keen to hear your thoughts. Do you think 15 is potentially too young for the legal age of consent? This is still up for debate whether or not it's going to be 15, but that's what they're looking at at the moment. And do you think we need to have a legal age of consent? I personally think we do because all of the research shows that teenagers, whether we like it or not, are having sex and they're certainly having sex before the age of 18, where it is the technical age of consent in most parts of the United States. So I think we have it around about right here in Australia where it's 16. But again, keen to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below. Very bad news for Sex and the City fans. Just when we thought the news of this reboot could not get any more tragic, they are filming it in the middle of a pandemic. Apparently filming is due to start later this year and they have axed arguably one of the most pivotal characters from the show, Samantha Jones, is not returning. But now they've actually just come out and confirmed that two more significant characters will not be returning to the show. And those characters have been revealed to be Mr. Big and Steve, who plays Miranda's love interest slash husband throughout the series. And I'm personally devastated by this news. Was never a big Mr. Big fan, big Mr. Big fan, but I really wasn't. He just was honestly annoying the way he constantly strung Harry along, like, make up your mind already, all right? I'm over it. Every time, what do you have some kind of radar? Carrie might be happy it's time to sweep in and shit all over it. What? But Steve, oh, I loved Steve. Steve was so funny and cheeky and he, he just adored Miranda and their relationship was just like couple goals. Miranda, you're the one. Plus he was quite the hottie, so he provided some good eye candy as well. So I really just think that it's just getting worse and worse the more news that comes out about this reboot. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be watching it just out of pure morbid curiosity. I wanna see just how bad of a train wreck it's going to be. But I really just think that they should have left the Sex and the City franchise be with the last movie sequel that they made. They've really milked all there is to milk out of it. And I think at this point they're risking just rewriting history and really just ruining the crux of what the show is supposed to be about. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And in more quirky sex news, bodybuilder Yuri Toloko has done a tell-all interview with Vice about his marriage to, wait for it, a sex doll. Now Yuri actually has quite a popular Instagram account where he essentially documents his relationship with his sex doll slash doll wife, Margot is her name. And he has come out and basically talked about it. And in particular in this interview, something that really stood out about this interview was his thoughts on their sex life and what he had to say about that. Yuri told Vice, when it comes to sex, Margot can give me different sensations to delight me. Margot will not only never refuse sex, but also allow me to be as violent as I want 
which turns me on because I love giving and feeling pain in bed. Now, this is of course a huge issue and it's not a particularly new issue because whether or not sex dolls essentially contribute to the normalization of violence against women has been up for discussion for a while now, particularly since sex dolls really came into the realm of being super realistic. And since we've seen AI technology being incorporated into sex dolls, there are now sex dolls which so closely represent real women. You can hold actual conversations with them. They are so lifelike. It's crazy. Oh my God robots are going to be taking over the planet soon. But on a more serious note, it really does raise the issue as to whether or not these dolls essentially allow people who may lean towards sexual violence, as in this particular case, to really feel that it's normalized and essentially maybe even encourage them to go and act that out. And unfortunately, because this whole area of more realistic sex dolls, particularly sex dolls incorporating AI technology is still so new we don't have a lot of research and data around this to know whether or not this theory does hold any water. But I do think there's some value in looking at some of the existing data that we do have around pornography and specifically pornography that depicts acts of violence during sex. We would expect if we're to go by this theory that seeing violence on screen encourages people to go and act it out, we would really expect to see an upward trend of sexual violence in most of the developed world on from the 1990s, which was when the internet kind of came became a thing and the proliferation of pornography took off. But actually in most parts of the developed world, it's been quite the opposite. We've really seen sexual assault reports flatline, if not decline. There is a theory by many academics that actually by watching porn that depicts violence, people who were otherwise going to go out and enact that violence essentially have a quote unquote safe space where they can explore that fantasy without having to actually go out and harm someone. And so it does make sense that sex dolls may also provide this forum for people to enact these more violent things that they're wanting to do without actually having to go out into the community and do that. And if that is the case, I personally think sex dolls are a great thing. I think we all also need to keep in mind that sex dolls really aren't just about sex, particularly with the fact you can now talk to them. They really have become companionship items for people that maybe would normally be a bit more isolated. People who live alone, elderly people, people living with disabilities to really give them that sense of companionship. And we know now that that is more important now than ever with the pandemic going on. There's been lockdowns and social distancing and people have reported experiencing this new kind of phenomenon, which is called touch hunger, which is essentially where people just crave to reach out and touch someone because as human beings, we need touch. And so I do think that there, there really is a lot of value in sex dolls for providing that. But as always, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that sex dolls could potentially normalize violence? And what are your thoughts on getting married to one? I'm very interested to hear. <laughs> and guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, feel free to give it a thumbs down. That's feedback as well. And hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well, because then YouTube will actually let you know when my videos go live every Monday day and who would want to miss the internet's sexiest feed of news because that's what this is it's the sexiest news on the internet this week in sex clever name right <laughs> i'm sorry it's the end of a very long day i'm slowly losing the plot so with that i am going to peace out and i will see you guys in the next video Mwah.